Following coverage of breaking news at 6, the sheriff announces the arrest of these officers. Those three detectives were working in an undercover capacity posing as drug buyers. All three were arrested on charges of tampering with evidence and conspiracy. The three are accused of removing beer cans from their undercover vehicle, tampering with evidence following the fatal police shooting of a suspect. We're asking for the public that supports police officers here in Jacksonville to reserve judgment um, until all the facts come out. Steve Zona, president of the Fraternal Order of Police, coming to the defense of the three officers and asking the public not to rush to judgment. The sheriff's office tells us those three detectives, Kyle Keyes, Lance Griffiths, and Brian Turner, have been placed on unpaid leave and stripped of their police authority. They have been released on their own recognizance. We have reporters covering every angle of this story, digging into who these officers are. We begin with Channel 4's Jim Pickett, who was there this afternoon when Sheriff Williams announced the arrest of these detectives. Jim? You know, Tom, I have to tell you, the sheriff was very forthcoming in the information about this, answering most of the questions that he was asked concerning these three officers. As you have mentioned, the three are suspended without pay, and they're charged with tampering with evidence and conspiracy. I want to go through the names of these officers involved. It was Kyle Keeves. He's a three-year veteran with the force. Lance Griffiths, an 11-year veteran, and Brian Turner, a nine-year veteran. And they were involved in a police-involved shooting, an undercover drug investigation investigation last week in Northwest Jacksonville. And in that investigation, Jerome Allen actually came up to their car and what they said, he had a fake handgun, stuck it into a window. And that's when the officers fired a shot, at least one of the officers fired a shot and killed him. And it was after that, that according to the sheriff, that they removed the beer cans from that undercover vehicle. Now I asked the sheriff directly about this case, about that car and about the officer who fired the shot. Here's what he said. Was the officer who fired the shot one of those that was relieved of duty? Yes, he was. So, so there were three in the car. All three were relieved of duty. Today. So obviously people, people were already thinking, I know you may have to say it, that an officer had been drinking that killed the suspect. Is that what you think happened? Well, again, we, we are looking at every aspect of this case. Clearly a possibility, but at this point we don't know. What we do know today is that those three officers removed evidence from a crime scene and that is against the law. And the sheriff says the reason they know that, that there was actually an audio recording made of the three talking about what happened, talking about uh, that the whole shooting and talking about removing the alcohol, the beer cans from the car. And he said the sheriff says he was upset by all of this. And of course, they're investigating those three suspended without pay pending this investigation. We're live from the sheriff's department, Jim Pickett, Channel 4, the local station. Within the past two hours, the president of the local police union came to the defense of these officers. He said the other detectives who reported the potential evidence tampering never once said that the officers in question smelled of alcohol or that they appeared to be in any way impaired. Channel 4's Heather Lee spoke with the union president. She's joining us now live. Heather. Well, the union president says that he believes this could have been handled internally because he says based on the facts that are, have been made public by the sheriff, it doesn't seem that they were trying to cover up any sort of criminal act by removing those props, but more administrative violations. Here are the pictures of those officers accused of tampering with evidence. FOP President Steve Zona says when it comes to the shooting, he believes the three officers involved that night handled themselves appropriately. He says the sheriff seems to also agree on this. Zona says if you point a gun at an officer, you can most likely expect to be shot or for that officer to defend themselves and other officers with them. He says when it comes to them moving those props, which according to the sheriff's office were alcoholic beverages and are legally allowed to be in the car to help officers blend in, he believes it was a bad decision on their part. But he says after you shoot and kill someone, you're not in your right mind to process it like a normal person who had not been through a traumatic event would. So do you believe that these arrests came at an appropriate time? I, I would have personally. I'd rather him see them finish the investigation first, the entire investigation, instead of rush into something like this. Now, he says the FOP plans on supporting these officers in their legal battle moving forward, and he says that it will be up to them whether they seek legal counsel through the FOP or their private attorneys. For now, we're live. Heather Lee, Channel 4, The Local Station.
Now, the I-team's Lindsay Gardner is digging deeper into the histories of these detectives. Lindsay? Mary, we've actually interviewed one of the arrested detectives before. This is Lance Griffiths. We talked to him back in 2011 when he actually saved the life of a five-month-old baby. He was headed to work downtown when he was flagged down by a mother who was frantic that her baby in the car seat was not breathing. He performed CPR on the spot, and that baby survived. Now, I did check his personnel file, and I found he had been on the force 11 years, and he received informal counseling and remedial training after a vehicle accident that happened last year. The youngest of the three arrested today was Kyle Kears. Now, he was on the force just three years, and I found he was punished last year for failing to conform to work standards, and he received informal counseling. I also found he, found he played baseball here for the University of North Florida while in college. And when he was hired, his friend actually posted this on Facebook. I am comforted in knowing a noble and honorable person joined law enforcement. I can't wait to be his first arrest. Congratulations on your new career, Officer Keys. Then there is the third detective, Brian Turner, a nine-year veteran. Right now, I'm still waiting on his personnel file. As soon as the I-team gets it, we will, of course, make it public. Tom. Thank you, Lindsay. In the past hour, our crime and safety analyst, Gil Smith, gave us his analysis of this potential police scandal. A former Jacksonville police officer himself, he says the key in the investigation is how long these officers have been on the force. While two are veterans, the third has only served for a few years. Sometimes with younger officers, the decision making is still not quite there. It takes time to develop that. But having a very young police department with so many veteran officers leaving because of the drop plan and retirement, that now younger officers are moving around to different divisions sometimes before they are actually ready. A recap of what we know right now. Three detectives have been arrested as the sheriff's office investigates the fatal police shooting of a suspect last week. Sheriff Williams says they removed beers from their undercover vehicle, and that is a crime tampering with evidence. The three have been stripped of their authority and placed on leave without pay pending possible dismissal. The Fraternal Order of Police has come to the defense of the detectives and is asking the public to withhold judgment.